Welcome to Business Line's State of the Economy podcast, where you'll find insight, analysis, and the story behind the numbers. Hello and welcome to Business Line's State of Economy podcast. This is your host, Hari Priya, tech reporter for the publication. In today's episode, we will be discussing how the advent of generative AI has changed the landscape for the BPM industry in India. To give us more insights, we have with us today Vikas Balla, President and Head of Insurance Business at AXL, and Shrikant Srinivasan, Vice President and Head Membership and Outreach at NASCOM. Thank you for joining us today, gentlemen. To begin with, we all do understand how important the BPM industry has been in India. But to underscore the magnitude, could you guys give us a sense of what is the size of the industry currently, where do the export values stand today, and how much employment does the sector provide you? Shrikant, you would like to go first? Okay, thank you, Hari Priya. So, first of all, I think, uh, yeah, I think the Indian BPM industry, of course, has been <clears throat> contributing significantly to the tech industry in India. Um, so, as, as the way we call it, right, the IT BPM industry is now, we call them call it the tech industry. Uh, the revenues of uh, the BPM industry is at a significant uh, value there. It's uh, roughly about $48.9 billion um, as of FY24. Uh, against the total $200 billion export. So it's almost there at about 24-25%, right? So that has been the kind of contribution. But what is equally uh, more important is, I think, uh, given that we're talking about the services industry and the BPM industry, is that India continues to be a destination of choice for technology and continues to maintain its position as the fastest growing major economy for the third consecutive year. And uh, incidentally, it's also pertinent to note that, you know, uh, India is the bears the number one spot in the A.T. Kearney's Global Services Location Index ever since it started, right? I mean, ever since its inception almost two decades ago. So that has been the contribution of this industry. Vikas, sir, you'd like to add? Yeah, sure. So I think uh, Shrikant covered uh, a good synopsis of the magnitude of the industry. I think what sometimes is not so well talked about is the impact it has in terms of the quality and the sophistication it, it brings to the entire services industry. So if you look at um, the end-to-end services, which includes IT, customer service, complex processing, f and and then as the industry has matured, add to it data, analytics, and now AI. When you are looking at setting up a global delivery model to be able to cater to any of the markets, whether it is the developed market or the developing market, you will find that in setting up a global delivery capability, you cannot set it up without India because India contributes across all of these services quite significantly. And many times it is difficult to find um, uh, you know, alternatives to India because to be able to get the quality of talent, the scale uh, at which India can provide that talent, uh, and the um, overall quality in terms of the outcomes that it can actually create for customers, it's very difficult to compete with India. So apart from just the magnitude of the industry, I think it's important to also consider and notice the overall quality and the impact it has on uh, global uh, delivery models, particularly in services. Understood. So the hottest topic in town now has been AI and generative AI, and a lot has already been spoken about on how it will affect the BPM industry. So for starters, maybe you guys could give us an idea of how AI is fundamentally changing things in the sector. What kind of changes, pivots, and adaptations have companies been making since the boom of AI? Okay, so um, uh, let me start on that. Um, I think it is important to note that every time there has been a new uh, disruptive technology which has emerged, uh, the BPM industry in India has uh, adopted it extremely well. In fact, not only adopted it, but taken a leadership position in it. And it has done it in two ways. One, it has used these um, new technologies to um, improve the existing set of services that it has, but it also has created new set of services based on these technologies. So when you go from automation to data and now to AI, every time we have been able to improve existing services and create new services. Now coming particularly to AI, there are four broad areas in which Indian BPM industries are leveraging generative AI. The first one is straightforward just embedding generative AI in operations. So the Indian BPM industry caters uh, to running operations for clients uh, on a global basis. 
Now, embedding generative AI in operations creates immense value for clients, clients' customers, and also for BPM organizations. As an example, if let's say there is a process which could be in healthcare, on insurance, financial services, and there are medical records which need to be um, read and understood, today using generative AI, you can actually summarize those medical records and you can significantly add to speed. The second area is creating solutions around generative AI. So the BPM industry is not only using generative AI to solve problems for a particular client, as I gave in the first example, but whenever we have found that there is a broader spectrum of opportunity, we can create solutions using generative AI. One of the most talked about solution is what we call a virtual agent assist. This is when somebody who's actually um, in India in the BPM sector is actually talking to a client's customer and trying to solve a client's customer's problem. Today, we have generative AI that can actually, you know, assist the agent and give prods and nudges to the agents as to what the next set of uh, conversation should be. Because if AI is actively listening into looking at all the um, information which is available and then prompting the agent on what's the next best thing to be done. The third area and something which has recently started emerging is creating centers of excellence around generative AI. Now, about 10 years ago, when data analytics started becoming big, one of the things that the Indian BPM industry started doing was create these large centers of excellence for clients. So when clients wanted to create capacity and capability in data analytics, Indian BPM industry could create those centers of excellence. Now we're finding that it's shifting to generative as centers of excellence. So as organizations are moving beyond specific use cases and want to use generative AI across multiple areas and functions and scale it up, we are finding that the Indian BPM industry can create those centers of excellence. And finally, and most importantly, generative AI can only be as effective as the quality of the data asset which supports it. And what we find is that organizations do not have the right data assets and they don't have access to these assets in a meaningful way. So for generative AI to be useful, you need to have um, data assets which will have structured, unstructured data. It will have internal data, external data. It has to be in the right place, preferably on the cloud. And you need to have make sure that you have the right access to it. And to be able to create that that fundamental capability, which is to create these data assets and have the right access to it, is something that the Indian VPM industry actually has over time become very good at. So these are the four areas, you know, embed generative AI in operations, create new solutions using generative AI, create uh, centers of excellence on generative AI, and, and, and create, help organizations create data assets, which are the fundamental things which are required to be able to use generative AI. Right. That's a great point you made, sir, about industry adopting, as it has done earlier as well. I think now it's generative AI. Uh, previously, it was RPA, uh, the same lens I've talked about. Right. And, yeah, we saw it. Uh, Shrikant, sir, would you like to add on this? Oh, of course. And um, I think uh, Vikas rightly said that. And I think I think one, one, one very important point here is I think this is one industry which has not just adopted but embraced every new technology, embraced every new emerging technology in every possible way. And I think if you really look at the industry, industry the over past 25 years, this industry has actually built an extremely strong presence. It's an extremely strong global presence in that sense. And and, and here, uh, AI has been playing a crucial role in some form or the other. But again, if you really say which are the top three, four areas where it has played a big role, one I would call is enhancing productivity. The second, of course, is ensuring the performance is high. The third one, very important, is predictability. The ability to predict has always been good. And last but not the least, in a world today where the customers are becoming more and even more demanding and even more demanding, personalization becomes key. So from an era of pure personalization to hyper personalization, I would probably even call it nano personalization with the kind of data we have today. I think this industry has embraced technology and has used it in every possible way to ensure that we can create some phenomenally good customer experiences and things like that. So that's what it has done. Right. Expanding a little more on that, so generative AI itself as a technology is something that's 
the promise of which is quite high uh, at least when we hear to when we hear people speak about it very bullish on it so so far in terms of the work that has happened in the industry the pivots and the changes that the companies are trying to build like we also mentioned earlier earlier could you give us some sense of how powerful is this how or how has this changed things when we say this is something that helps with efficiency is there any kind of a percentage that we can quote and say that this is how things have improved so far so let me uh, maybe maybe i will go and then maybe i'll request vikas to add uh, so in terms of percentages etc maybe vikas would be the right person to add but largely uh, what i would kind of you know sum it up to say that uh, some of these new offerings uh, which are there and uh, the, the way they are impacting in in operations and bpm services across areas key areas where people have seen significant kind of a usage and impact positive impact in that sense are uh, especially in the front end uh, where customer experience has mattered uh, in certain enterprise functions in the back end also there have been significant productivity uh, enhancements uh, and this has also helped in a kind of you know building that vertical specific uh, or domain specific core operations kind of a uh, capability now ex- some of these could be you know uh, the conversational ai services could be used uh, have been used in uh, enhancing customer experiences and uh, because did talk about some of the bots the earlier and then in 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 uh, cases where this specific to a particular vertical the kind of data that has come in the data that has been accumulated over time has helped in creating a work verticalized or a customized llm there where you know the entire knowledge that has been Uh, gathered and collated over time can be used in a very meaningful manner to answer some of the questions that people have which uh, probably could be a good knowledge bank that has been created uh, th- typically a knowledge summarization and a documentation that could be done in those areas and uh, and area this has applied across various functions it could be legal it could be human resources it could be finance accounting etc etc it could be across or it could be very specific uh, domain areas like a pharma or a retail and so on and so forth let me stop here and probably request uh, vikas to add yeah sure shrikant so you know generative ai is probably the most disruptive technology that we have seen perhaps since the launch of smartphones when smartphones <laughs> came they changed the the realm of possibility suddenly you could look at doing things that uh, you could not think of earlier i think generative ai mm. ha- is a technology which promises something similar mm. many times we limit ourselves by thinking of how generative ai can actually help us do things better i think generative ai will eventually help us do things which are not possible to be done today without use of some technology you know at a fundamental level generative ai is different from some of the earlier waves of technology at in three dimensions the first one is it's got a cross generational impact so you know you could actually have uh, a 15 year old a 40 year old and a 80 year old all experimenting with generative ai because the usability and the power it has certainly given to people uh, to explore mm-hmm. what something like generative ai can do is quite immense which is very different from from other technology waves you know robotics many people could not experience first hand with generative ai can so i think the acceptability of of that is very high the second is that most of the ai that was being done before generative ai was largely limited to use of structured data so how do you use structured data for creating intelligence and now generative ai basically has moved that from structured data to one structured data so suddenly yes. you know voice um graph graphics images notes documents handwritten documents everything is in play which totally expands how much of information you can actually mine to create intelligence and then the third thing is this ability of generative right that's why it's called generative so it can create uh, you know it is not limiting itself to just analysis and um, and reporting it's basically using it's digesting inf- digesting information and then and then generating an output which has got a human like interface now when you look at these three things which is multi generational impact the ability to use unstructured data which significantly expands the universe on which you could actually uh, base your intelligence on and the um, ability to generate it suddenly opens opportunities that were not there earlier now coming back to where generally the industries and what 
we as BPM players are seeing. I would still say that we are in a bit of an experimentation phase right now. Most organizations are doing something on generative AI. Nobody can afford to not do anything. But we are looking at, you know, use cases, use cases in specific areas. Organizations are investing even at a time when the macroeconomic environment globally isn't very strong. Generative AI is still attracting some uh, some investment. So some investment is flowing in. But people are cautious because there are lots of things which are not so well known right now. For example, regulation, for example, issue about how to use generative AI in a safe mode. Uh, so, you know, we've all heard about biases and hallucinations. How much do you expose your customers and your PNL to generative AI uh, output? Mm-hmm. So we, we are still in that phase where we are moving, you know, sort of from experimentation into production mode. It's impossible for us to predict at what speed it will move over the next six to 12 months. But I think one thing is very clear. If you take a three to five year horizon, I think generative AI would have created a significant impact in the way, not only that the BPM industry is actually using it to run operations, but uh, but also the way that we level lives. Understood. Uh, so th- the next big debate when it comes to the uh, adoption uh, and AI and stuff is how AI could replace employees. Uh, I know there is a lot of perspective around this, but given that this is a very talent heavy sector, how do you guys look at it? Basically, I think recently the TCS CEO also made a com- comment around this and we had a couple of reports that uh, shows that the jobs were slashed after a particular company adopted some of AI techniques. So how, how are you guys looking at this? So if I can go first, um, Every time a new technology wave comes in, it does displace some jobs, but it always creates more. It always creates new jobs. The same thing is true for generative AI. It is right. Some of the very simple repetitive tasks will eventually uh, be taken over. And by the way, earlier we used to think of um, these as pure transactional tasks. But, you know, even when you look at coding, uh, in the area of uh, software or analytics, the simple coding arguably can be done by generative AI today. And there are enough demonstrated uh, capabilities which are there in the marketplace for that to happen. So, yes, it will have an impact on certain segment of jobs. However, new jobs will be created and these jobs will be all around uh, how to use um, generative AI, how to work on generative AI, how to work with generative AI and you know, that that opportunity will be there. So it's a continuous evolution and it's not going to stop just a generative AI. I think after generative AI, there'll be a next wave of technology. Every new wave of technology will basically eliminate some jobs, but create some new. But I think overall, one has to accept it because it is for advancement of humankind. Of course, you know, making sure that we manage some of the risks associated with giving too much of uh, power to a technology. Two important things from a talent perspective. The first one is, as far as India is concerned, it is a powerhouse of of talent, not only in BPM, but in data, in analytics, in engineering, in uh, in uh, IT. Uh, and as generative AI and AI is maturing, uh, we are finding that the talent in India, which was the, te- the, the technical talent in India, the IT, the data scientists, the analytics talent, is pivoting very nicely towards AI and generative AI. And just like I said, that when you look at a global delivery capability, uh, you know, India is an extremely important component of that, both from a scale perspective as well as a quality perspective. I have no doubt that even in AI and generative AI, India is going to keep playing that role. So new jobs will be created. There's a second uh, consideration, which I think is extremely important, and it's important for all of us, you know, all the people who are there um, working in in uh, in services. So there are people who uh, are currently working on generative AI or will work on generative AI because they're uh, either through education or experience or skill, they have a technical background. And these are people who are pivoting to working on generative AI. So when I say that, it includes includes coding, working on large language models, um, creating new Gen AI solutions, doing prompt engineering, everything associated with generative AI. 
But when, when then there's talent which does not have the technical background, either through education qualification or through experience to start working on generative AI, but they still need to go through a bit of a learning curve because now they have to at least work with generative AI because now generative AI is going to be part of their job. So they have to become com comfortable and conversant with how to work with AI and generative AI. So people working on generative AI and people working with generative AI both will need to you know, just make sure that they keep working on self-development and keep upping their skill set to remain relevant for the future. So you'd like to add? Yeah. Okay. No, I think I fully agree with what Vikas said. And uh, see, Haripriya, it's, it's like this, right? Every time a new technology comes, there, there are certain impacts which come and go. I mean, but uh, we all know that in the last, in the from the advent of computerization, as I would call it, across industries over the last so many decades, maybe three decades or even more, I think what has happened is only that jobs have always gone up. What is here pertinent for people to understand is that one, every industry obviously has to kind of adopt the latest technologies to be having its own um, sustainable competitive advantage in business. And hence, that is not a choice. Today, uh, using these technologies is no more an option, but a must. But now when you do these things, Obviously, with technology, uh, the kind of jobs that we do, the kind of jobs, uh, the kind of impact that the job has will be different. So what will happen is certain jobs which are very routine in nature, which are very mundane in nature, which are very, which can be kind of automated, will continue to be automated. But again, on the other side, there will be newer jobs which will kind of come up, right? Today, as we speak, all these advances in technology will necessitate, first of all, uh, a very important thing called reskilling and upskilling of the workforce. Now, if, if people have to adapt to these new technologies, they will have to first uh, kind of, you know, reskill and upskill themselves if they have to utilize all these tools. The second one is as these as they keep adapting, the newer roles will start coming in. I mean, today, I mean, when, when data science was picking up a few years ago, we talked about data scientists, uh, you know, being on the rise. Today, we have uh, certain kinds of AI related roles being on the rise, right? And uh, AI ethicists people who can use AI in a very ethical manner, people who are talking about these things, responsible use of AI. We're talking about business analysts who can use AI better. You know, these are the roles which are emerging today, uh, demanding very, very specialized expertise. So for every one role which may not be having its significant, may be losing its significance today, there could be another one which could be kind of, you know, gaining ground on the other side. So, I mean, we all know that in a, a world of generative AI, if we have to search for the right thing, if you have to generate the right data, we also need to prompt well. Prompt engineering is another area. So today that has also become a great area where people are finding a lot of opportunity in saying, can this become probably one of the next uh, more important needed roles in the upcoming uh, generative AI era? So that way, I think jobs will continue to evolve and newer roles will continue to come as and when certain of the older roles become, I would say, not insignificant, but less significant. Understood, sir. Those were some great insights and uh, quite a positive note to end on. This has been a lovely conversation. Uh, thank you so much for your time and your insights. We hope you enjoyed it, too. Sure. Yes, thank we did. You. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you very much.